Jim Simons, a former mathematician and employee of an intelligence agency, he figured out the market and became the most successful money manager in the modern era. Using his mathematical background and large sets of data, Simon set out to build computer models that he believed could identify and profit from patterns in the market. His algorithms are based on data from as far back as the 1700s, and they take advantage of even the smallest and shortest fluctuations in prices. I did a lot of math, I made a lot of money, and I gave almost all of it away. That's the story of my life. Jim Simons was born in 1938, and thus Jim Simons' age was 84 in 2022. Simons studied mathematics at MIT, and later he got his PhD and used his math abilities to break codes for the U.S. National Security Agency and teach at MIT. For his contribution to math and finance, he was elected to the National Academy of Sciences of the USA in 2014. However, Jim Simons is not known for his mathematical contributions, but for his track record as a hedge fund manager. During his working career, Simon spent considerable time trying to use quantitative models to predict the markets. Jim Simons' fund has an excellent track record. In 1978, he quit his job and founded Monometrics, a hedge fund. At that time, quant was an unknown word, and Simon's fund employed fundamental and technical approaches. He was moderately successful but felt gut-wrenched by the emotional swings in the market. Simons decided to use a purely systematic approach instead to avoid the emotional roller coasters. Like most traders, he was liable to the most common trading biases. He didn't really succeed until the early 80s when he managed to put together a decent team of so-called quants. He needed math geniuses and quants, not MBAs, and his first employees were from universities or NSA. I brought in a guy from IDA. He was the best cryptanalyst in the world. He was a, he was a wonderful model maker and, and so on. He, in fact, he, he was uh, the Baum of Baumwell, Baumwell. So he was a very smart guy. And I said, you know, you, I'm looking at these commodity charts. Actually, it was currencies that we were trading. And they seem to have some shape to them. They don't look random to me. So maybe we could make some models. And he said, okay. But it was a gut-wrenching experience. You don't... You know, one day you walk in and you think you're a genius. God, all my positions are in my way. Look, I'm a... and the next day you walk in and they're against you and you feel like you're, you're a dope. How could I have done what I did and so on? Jim Simon's trading strategy, employed through his hedge fund Renaissance Technologies, is based on a quantitative and systematic approach to trading financial markets. This strategy is often referred to as a quantitative or algorithmic trading strategy. Here's a simplified explanation of how it worked. At its core, the strategy began with a meticulous collection of historical data encompassing a wide range of financial instruments, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, and their corresponding metrics. This data, including price movements, trading volumes, interest rates, and economic indicators, formed the foundation for their approach. Then skilled mathematicians, physicists, and computer scientists at the firm then developed intricate models to dissect this data. These models incorporated a variety of methodologies. Time series analysis uncovered patterns evolving over time, while machine learning algorithms pinpointed subtle relationships that hinted at potential market movements. These quantitative models were designed to identify patterns that human analysis would likely overlook. Upon identifying these patterns and anomalies, the models generated trading signals, indicating when to buy, sell, or hold specific assets. These signals were the result of complex computations aimed at predicting short-term price movements based on historical data-driven insights. The strategy's risk management component came next, emphasizing the importance of diversification and position limits. By spreading investments across a range of assets and markets, Renaissance technologies mitigated the impact of any single unfavorable event. Position limits ensured that no one trade could disproportionately impact their portfolio. A notable aspect of the strategy was the integration of high-frequency trading. Executing a high volume of trades within extremely short timeframes enabled them to exploit fleeting price discrepancies, opportunities that would have otherwise gone unnoticed by human traders. Holding periods were short-term, often lasting from seconds to just a few days. 
This strategy allowed Renaissance technologies to capitalize on swiftly changing market dynamics, where inefficiencies and patterns emerged momentarily. Central to their success was the commitment to continuous improvement. The firm consistently refined their models to adapt to shifting market conditions and incorporated newly available data sources, aiming to maintain their edge in the rapidly evolving financial landscape. Renaissance Technologies' propensity for secrecy was a defining element. By guarding their algorithms and methodologies as proprietary trade secrets, they ensured a distinct competitive advantage in the market. The system, as it is today, is, is extraordinarily elaborate. But it's not a whole lot of, it, you know, it's, it's what's called machine learning. So you find things that are predictive. You might guess, oh, such and such should be predictive, might be predictive, and you test it out in the computer and maybe it isn't, maybe it isn't. You test it out on long-term historical data and uh, price data and other things. And then you add to the system this if it, if it works, and if it doesn't, you, you, you throw it out. Jim Simon's trading strategy returned 66% annually over a 30-year span from 1988 to 2018, causing him to become the wealthiest hedge fund manager in America. Equity trading has completely metamorphosed over the past few years globally. Machines, algorithms, and vast data sets have replaced human perception. According to Mortar Intelligence, about 60 to 73 percent of the overall U.S. stock market trading in 2021 was algorithmic. A huge credit for this goes to Jim Simons. He played a critical role in laying the foundation of quant trading three decades ago. According to Forbes, he has been America's wealthiest hedge fund manager for four consecutive years. His hedge fund is more famous for its medallion funds, which averaged 40% annual returns after fees from 1988 through 2018. On a gross basis, the fund returned an average of 66.1% gross before fees from 1988 until 2018. The Medallion Fund is one of the most successful hedge funds in history. It is so profitable that it charges enormous fees to the unit owners. The fund has a stunning track record and has grown significantly faster than Warren Buffet portfolio. Quant Fund did fabulously on the short-term trading. They, they found little algorithms that worked to make them add predictive value. And as long as they kept working, they just kept doing it as long as the money kept coming in. When they got to using the same system, just to finding some little algorithm and trying to do it mechanically, for long-term stock predictions, the record was not nearly as good. And in the short-term stuff, they found that if they tried to do it too much, they destroyed their own advantage. So there was a limit on the amount they could make. But they were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. They're very, them. very smart. And very smart and very rich. Computer algorithms help Medallion Fund make innumerable split-second trades in the equities and futures markets. On the other hand, Renaissance holds stocks for several weeks or months to beat the S&P 500 with less volatility. Renaissance analyzes the past because it believes investors will behave according to their past preferences. Traders are people who create patterns based on their emotions and opinions. Price patterns can repeat, so investors must learn to trade on these patterns and get an edge. Jim Simons' trading strategy adopts the scientific method to counter biases, cognitive and emotional. They propose hypotheses, then test and use them or review them to achieve their predetermined output. Renaissance has demonstrated that traders can decipher many latent forces impacting the security price movement with adequate data, computational power, and modeling experience, which would escape the investor's eyes. Backtesting past historical price data is crucial as it can offer you an edge in trading the existing price action. A critical takeaway from Jim Simons' trading strategy is to avoid illiquid stocks, options, futures, and cryptocurrencies as you could lose money in the bid and ask spreads. You could also face volume issues and may not be able to exit a given position when you want. Also, be careful to choose liquid asset classes and watch trading signals across all liquid asset classes. It would be best if you also aim to trade various signals on multiple asset classes. Take this lesson from Jim Simons that he didn't just restrict himself to the quest for spectacular returns, but he determined his success by building a highly efficient system and an immensely collaborative team of top-notch researchers and mathematicians.